Welcome to a special edition of Anglican Unscripted, episode 755. I'm Kevin Coulson with special host David Old. Hello and welcome to a special edition of Anglican TV, David Old.net, uh, producing something. We had some technical glitches, so we weren't able to get Kevin on, but we don't need him because <laughs> we have with us, and it's late at night here in Australia, but we have with oh, us uh, Bishop Richard Condy of Tasmania. Hello, uh, Richard. Thanks for uh, joining us. Uh, Bishop of Tasmania and Chair of GAFCON Australia. And uh, Bishop Glenn Davies, formerly... Archbishop of Sydney and now uh, about to be commissioned as the new Bishop of the Diocese of the Southern Cross, which is what we're all uh, here to talk about. It's been a heady two days at the GAFCON Australasia conference here in Canberra uh, on the sort of the middle of the east and southeastern seaboard of Australia. Uh, 350 plus delegates mm -hmm. uh, meeting together uh, and the news on the very first day was the formation of the Diocese of the Southern Cross. Uh, but why don't uh, I'll turn first to uh, to to Richard Condy. Richard, tell us a little bit about that. What, what is the Diocese of the Southern Cross and why? Why have we even had to do that? So David, it's a, uh, a, a, a new uh, a geographic diocese across Australia uh, that is uh, going to pick up people who are leaving the Anglican Church of Australia. Uh, as you, you viewers might know, uh, the appellate tribunal in Australia uh, changed uh, the um, I made an opinion last year that uh, a service of same-sex blessing developed by one of our dioceses was not inconsistent with the Constitution. And uh, we had some debate about that at our General Synod and uh, various things have come to a head and uh, we, we had uh, a number of people feeling very, very uh, concerned about remaining in uh, the Anglican Church of Australia about that. And so uh, just a couple of weeks ago, uh, one of uh, the clergy in the Diocese of Brisbane resigned his licence and uh, he uh, left. And so what GAFCON did uh, a couple of uh, last year was uh, say that it would establish a new, uh, a new parochial uh, ecclesial structure, sorry, ecclesial structure uh, in parallel with the Anglican Church in Australia uh, to provide uh, a home, a lifeboat really, uh, for people who could no longer receive the ministry of their bishops. And so uh, this uh, parish has joined and uh, uh, it, it's it's a kind of a, like a company structure, and Glenn is one of the directors of the company, yep. but he's also uh, the bishop, and uh, so we're going to commission him as the bishop over this new uh, diocese in Australia. Uh, that it, that will be a place, a home uh, for these faithful Anglicans who can't stay. Right. So what what was there in potential and theory? We've now actually had to put into place. Yeah, that's right. Now, um, Glenn, I, I seem to remember you retiring last year. Uh, yes, my wife recalls that. <laughs> yes, well. I'm going to say, and yet, and yet here you are, and and uh, we joke about it, but actually, that, that that's a big decision uh, for you actually to commit to this. What what um uh, what made you come to that to that decision? Well, I think that the need, uh, the need for pastoral care for people who can no longer uh, have the uh, or no longer want, no longer suffer the jurisdiction of bishops who are progressive, liberal. Uh, overturning the teaching of scripture and particularly the teaching of our Lord Jesus on the question of marriage that they, they can't continue like that and they want to remain Anglican so how do you remain Anglican if you can't stay in the diocese you can't you know move into state or something like that so this diocese is like a lifeboat a safe refuge a safe haven for people who want to remain Anglican but not under the current Anglican structure in the Anglican Church of Australia I love the Anglican Church of Australia. I've been a member of that uh, uh, all my life. But to see it uh, in, in, in this disarray is very sad. So it's not a triumphalist feeling I have with regard to this. Rather, it is a sense of sadness, but joy for those who want to remain Anglican that I may, with the gifts that God's given me, maintain that uh, relationship for these congregations. And as Richard said, we've got a congregation in Queensland, a state uh, north of uh, here, and they began last Sunday. He had said to his congregation, I'm leaving, anyone who wants to follow can. He didn't know who was going to come. Forty people 
and wow. the congregation of about 60 oh my word uh, came on the uh, on that Sunday morning and that was just a wonderful and he and the people said the singing was joyful they met in the local club uh, a golf club like a golf club and it was just just wonderful so the dice of the Southern Cross has begun and I'm privileged to have Archbishop Foley Beach here from yeah. the Gafcon Primates Council uh, Bishop Jay Bean from the Confessing Anglicans in New Zealand and Aotearoa and uh, of course my friend Richard Condy who's the chair of GAFCON Australia uh, to be there to commission pray for me and we have some other people lay people and uh, clergy who will pray for me as well in the service which is wonderful that's exciting so that's going to happen tomorrow morning our time correct uh, um in about 12 hours time Correct, think, yes. yeah, 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 we need to get some sleep before then. Yes, we do. Um, now, the media have been out uh, in force today. There's been TV news crews and cameras, and I know you've been doing interviews and so on, and we've begun to see some of the first of those reports um, online and in the online newspapers. Mm. There's lots of talk about a split, that this is a, a brand new church, the Anglican Church of Australia is split open. Is that, is that a fair way of describing it, or, or would you describe it in, in other terms? No, in actual fact, I think the split or the schism, which is the you know, the theological term for it, is that the bishops with a progressive agenda, they are schismatics because they have taken away the formularies of the undergird Anglicanism. What makes you an Anglican is your commitment to the scriptures as God's word written, the 39 articles as a theological expression of the teaching of the Bible and the Book of Common Prayer as a liturgical expression of how we respond to God. Now, the Diocese of Southern Cross has all those. In fact, the Jerusalem Declaration, which of course has all those and a, and a few bit, a few other things, uh, is the the contemporary expression of Anglicanism in the in the 21st century. So that's what we are. So we've not split. We are just renewing, reforming, and restoring the Anglican foundations which, of course, Thomas Cramer set before us in the 16th century. Yeah, he did. And uh, Ashley Noll has been with us as well this week, uh, setting out, again, some of that, some of that, some of that understanding. Uh, look, uh, gentlemen, I don't want to keep you uh, for too long. It is uh, probably way past our bedtimes um, already, and there's another uh, long day to go tomorrow. Uh, probably most importantly of all the questions I ask, uh, there'll be lots of people watching this all over the world. How can they be praying over these next few days for the Diocese of the Southern Cross and for GAFCON Australia well, be, and beyond? I, yes, I, th I think it would be really good to to be praying for uh, people who are really uh, hurting, uh, really thinking about their futures, uh, thinking about whether they can stay or whether they need to go uh, and find a, a new home. Uh, it takes courage, doesn't it, uh, to stand up for truth. Mm -hmm. And so we need to pray for courage. We need to pray for wisdom. We need to pray for faithfulness uh, of ministers uh, right around uh, the country in, in these dioceses where uh, things are very difficult for them. Uh, we've been talking to lots of them this week and uh, lots of them have, have difficult questions they have to grapple with and it'd be great to pray for them. Great to pray for Glenn as he takes up this new responsibility and uh, just a very small diocese with one parish at the moment. So far. But, uh, one church, so, but so far. And, uh, and, and pray that uh, God would lead us uh, into the future yeah. so that we can be bold for him. Some exciting days ahead. Something quite momentous has happened in the Anglican Church of Australia this week. Yeah, that's it right. Is. Yeah. Yeah. Pray for the evil one will be restrained. Uh, we'll be attacked by the media, we'll be attacked by people within the Anglican Church of Australia. But let our focus be on spreading the good news of the gospel Absolutely. to all Australia. Yeah. That, that's what we're all about. We want to be faithful disciples of Jesus and proclaim Christ faithfully to our nation. Bishops Richard and Glenn, thanks for joining us today. Thanks, David. You're welcome, thanks. David. Thank you, viewers. <laughs>